Hello there. I'm the Thirsty Bookworm, and I'm going to filibuster you all on Mictor's Unblended American Whiskey. This is the Whiskey Talking. You might be asking yourself, what makes it American Whiskey? Well, there's a really simple answer to that. It has nothing to do with the ingredients, or the barrel, or the aging process, and has everything to do with Hulk Hogan singing Real American while playing a guitar emblazoned with the American flag during the bottling process. Michter's gives a long history in the passing of the baton of the company going all the way back to pre-revolution times. That sounds great, but in reality, they bought out the bankrupted brand and it started again in the 90s rather than having it run continuously. I have no problem with this, they aren't being disingenuous, they're paying homage to the brand, but what really matters isn't a romantic backstory, it's what's in the bottle. So what's in the bottle? A 41.7 ABV whiskey, or 83.4 proof if you have trouble with multiplication when decimals are involved. I feel like it should have been 50 ABV since there are 50 states, or maybe even 48 depending on your feelings towards Alaska and Hawaii's legitimacy. Discuss. The mash bill is apparently a pre-revolution secret because I couldn't find it on the internet. I assume they found it written on the back of the Declaration of Independence and just ran with it. The whiskey is stored in used bourbon-soaked barrels. I think that means they were too lazy to completely empty the barrels after bottling their bourbon. Advertising can make anything sound good. Speaking of advertising, the bottle design. I'm a fan. They went patriotic without a gaudy eagle or a recreation of Washington crossing the Delaware River, getting ready to go full operator on a bunch of crumpet stuffers. It's simple and recognizable to the brand, as it's the same as their other lines labeling, with a color palette and verbiage change. The liquid is contained by a quirk and not a twist cap, so you know it's good. How about the look of the liquid? It looks like whiskey. For color, I would confidently say that it's the exact color of the amber waves of grain Catherine Lee Bates was talking about when writing America the Beautiful. The legs will be rated on my scale from Lieutenant Dan to Dr. Frankenfurter. I give Michter's American, Kurt Russell while dressed up like a lady, in the famous movie Tango and Cash. The nose. As usual, I will give my wife's nosing first, which was fruity, a berry of some kind, raspberry? No, bug spray. Vanilla? Maybe maple. What I smelled was oak, vanilla, caramel or caramel, depending on what you think is right, and corn. I know this sounds like a cop-out, and I did really try, but that's all I got. According to the website, we should be smelling, who knows, they didn't take the time to subliminally tell me what I should tell you guys I smelled, just like our founding fathers would have wanted. The taste is sweet up front, and then for me, I get a super brief taste of bar soap, like when your parents wash out your mouth, you know, for saying something bad about Teddy Roosevelt or Evil Knievel. This was just in my initial sip, it was a flash in the pan note. Afterward, I consistently tasted oak and toffee, followed by some spiciness on the back end and some strong notes of freedom ringing. I spent about 40 American dollars on this bottle, and it was probably worth it. I'm not as high on it as a lot of people are, and I actually think that their bourbon is better, and that puts me in the minority. But it's a free country, and the First Amendment guarantees their right to be wrong and say it out loud. I will give this five out of seven books about badass Americans. If you have any suggestions on books about American badasses, drop me a comment below. I'm the Thirsty Bookworm, and this has been the Whiskey Talkin'.